what we're going to cover today is uh, the reasons for conking out. It's conking out, it's unpredictable, it can be restarted after about five minutes or maybe just a little longer and uh, it acts like there could be you know a weakness in the fuel system whether it's the fuel pump or not I'm not so sure. Typically when the fuel pump goes bad it's going to be kind of a slow process it won't go all at once. Uh, this truck of course has the twin fuel tanks and right now I'm on the rear fuel tank as you can see here and it's been sitting a long time completely cold what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the ignition switch into the start position I could actually hear the fuel pump relay but if it's to form we're not going to get to start so let's go ahead I push the pedal basically down to the floor and then brought it halfway back and let's crank it okay so this time on the third try it started and uh, I think the next thing I want to really do is go over the fuel pressure and how how that is taken and what to look for but uh, usually it won't start and then if you're on the rear tank or even on the front tank this thing's been conking out it's got other problems I think besides just the fuel pump but anyway we're going to go ahead and examine that and see if we still need to replace the fuel pump I'm going to put it into the start position or run position halfway to the floor and back and then I'm going to crank it it's running and the pressure indicating there it looks like it's about 10 and that's what they're calling for let me close, zoom up on there you see that pressure is still there so this hookup actually worked now let's go to the front I'm going to switch over to the front tank same thing run position halfway to the floor and back and then crank it I don't notice any pressure difference. The fuel filter has been replaced and run for you know the evening and uh, plus some hours. And I got two conk outs with it on both tanks. Uh, I will note that it was easier to start so I don't know uh, I'm sure that the fuel filter was a good idea but I, I don't think that it uh, in any way cured the problem. It certainly it didn't as far as I can tell. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you that I'm on the rear tank here, or I should be. Let's put it on the rear tank. And uh, the reason I'm putting the pedal to the floor and using the pedal at all is to take advantage of the, the uh, air bypass feature, uh, the idle air bypass, indicating that the IAC is actually working. And that checks good anyway, but I've noticed that in doing this test I want to be consistent uh, and not uh, try to rely on just you know a foot off accelerator and see uh, does that actually work because I've had trouble starting it before and when I do restart I do do this and it makes it go a lot better that's something to remember about Ford and if, I'm sure you have an IAC so at this time let's go ahead and put it in the run position the engine's dead cold it's been sitting a long time and let's see if there's any problem in starting on the rear tank. There's a little bit of hesitation, but it started right up. So we're going to need to proceed now to some other components. And uh, I've got a suspicion that we're going to start to look at things like the distributor. We're going to try to clean some connections first, but uh, it looks like there's a little bit more wrong than uh, anything to do with the fuel filter and the fuel pumps at this point I'm satisfied that they're working so there are a few things that we can check that may make a difference but I kinda doubt it one of them are things like this SP out connector um, this is what has to be unplugged to do timing with Ford and some other entities will try to tell you you can't 
time this engine, I'm just going to unplug it and replug it. Then the ignition control module that's on the fender here, hard to see, there it is. Unplug that, clean the terminals. I doubt that's going to make a difference. I mentioned the uh, IAC, unplug and clean that, and then the throttle position sensor, unplug and clean that. The crankshaft position sensor, uh, I'm going to try to get down to that, but I'm also thinking that we're getting ready to get into distributor issues, which may mean that the distributor is going to need to be pulled and replaced. I haven't decided yet, but everything else in this vehicle checks good, so they're starting to look like that. I doubt it's the coil, which is over here. I doubt it, but anyway, I'm going to have to actually get a lot more involved in this than I had planned. The distributor is actually going to probably be the most meaty thing to start working on. After cleaning the connectors and the, on the cables and the wires that I pointed out to you uh, around the SP out and the ICM, I ran for not that much longer and I got this P0320 and uh, what that indicates is that there is an electrical connection problem I believe between the crankshaft position sensor and uh, the rest of the uh, electrical system and possibly the distributor. It could be the plug to the distributor, it could be connections to the coil. It's kind of a catch-all but I think we're moving in the right direction. Uh, there's also a technical service bulletin for this 951511 out there and since I touched, uh, uh, you know, moved around that SP out connector, we're going to go ahead and, and take uh, action on that one uh, prior to doing anything to the distributor. If that doesn't clear it up, then we're going to be into the distributor it looks like. Just a quick note, when uh, you've been cranking the engine so much, one of the things to also evaluate is to make sure that the battery is in good condition. I'm beginning to find that mine isn't so good. Uh, I've been charging this overnight and I'm still drawing 3 amps on this small charger. So uh, you definitely want to make sure your battery is going to be up to standard when you're having any cranking issues. And if it's not, get the charger on there. Uh, and I've got a, a very, you know, this is a primitive charger, but it works quite well. And that's just a tip. Uh, make sure these the terminals are clean. And they say to examine this relay junction. Make sure those connections are good. But I don't think that's our problem. It's just a tip for battery charging. This is the technical service bulletin I mentioned, the TSB 9515-11. Someone uh, named, uh, going by Steve83, has put it out there on the internet for us. It's kind of a primitive way to introduce this, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the elements that we're looking for are the connectors to the PCM, the ICM, and related to the SP out that I already kind of uh, showed you about. This is a close-up of where we're going to be looking at that junction. Uh, the splice near the what they call the Y, I believe it is. So uh, we're going to follow the procedures on that. There's um, supposed to be a, a, a drain wire or ground wire that's in that bundle and it may be shorting against another piece of wire or even a slightly misinstalled connector that has some copper wire coming out of it. This copper or this ground wire, probably copper and no doubt, screwed here and it goes down into that bundle that we're talking about. Down here you can see the connector for the PCM on the, the firewall. Let's see, yeah, down here. Uh, that's That's got to be on voltage. You have to disconnect the battery before you do this. And then over here I mentioned this junction where the SP out is. That goes into that connector where the ICM is. i show you that, which is here. I've already unplugged that and cleaned it. And right after that I got the P0320. So, I don't know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and execute the uh, technical service bulletin to be on the safe side, followed by examining the connections on the crankshaft position, a sensor, and then also any wires leading to the distributor. And from there, we'll go to the distributor. We're at the end now, and we found out what the problem is. It turned out it was definitely not the TSB 951511. Although it was good to open up that wiring harness and confirm it, I can say with absolute certainty that was not where the issue was. It came down to having to do the distributor with the idea that that would be the main source of the problem. 
this is the distributor as it came out. Notice it's got the long shaft, that hexagonal shaft that drives the oil pump, and it's only held in there with a snap ring. So you've got to be careful to get that part out, put it in the new distributor, and um, ensure that it does not fall down into the oil pan. If it does, you've got a big mess, but pretty much it should go okay. It comes out really with just the pressure of one hand, pretty much. There we go. See the snap ring at top? You can see it. That's all that's holding it in there. So that's what you have to do when you're going to replace the distributor. It's absolutely essential to get number one cylinder into the top dead center position before disassembling the distributor from the engine. Another fine point, when I was working with the, the old distributor, I found this part, which is to an old rotor. It had broken off. I had uh, a failure at the side of the road one day, and uh, that time I had to get towed in. But that's all that was wrong, was that the rotor had failed, and I just simply got a new rotor and put it on there. But this part had fallen down in the distributor. This may have been the cause of all the problems, too, for all I know, you know. So it just fell out here while I was working with it. Nice to know. There's a myth out there that someone has promulgated that the distributor becomes magnetized with age and they say to take a steel nut and see does it stick anywhere on the, the that plate or you know the shaft and uh, it doesn't. Uh, this this otherwise appears good. Uh, it would have worked, uh, I mean it did work for 370,000 miles so you know it mustn't be that bad. Uh, the steel part that was bouncing around in there goes back about five years, so I don't see, uh, you know, how that could have been the case. Maybe it was. I would assume the PIP coil in there, but I don't have any way to test that. That's just another note in case someone tells you that uh, magnetization is the problem. I don't think so. I, I couldn't find any evidence of that. Uh, but you see the strange symptoms that it had. One of the symptoms it also had was hard starting for no apparent reason on a hot day. And you saw some starting issues. Uh, I think the fuel uh, filter definitely helped. Everything else checked out. The crankshaft position sensor. Uh, every bit of it. And uh, we're in good shape and been running just fine. Wanted to pass along a tip real quick if I could. Although I can't help you with it. Um, this is out of print. But to me, it's as valuable as any set of shop manuals ever could be. Uh, and if you can find one of these, grab it, uh, regardless of the price. Because in here, you've got all these things, uh, walkthrough, codes, you name it. The current one that's sold at the auto parts store is just not the same. I want to show you, not that it helps, but the ISBN, in case there's any hope you could trace it down. I doubt that there's any way to get it. So I appreciate you hanging in with me. You see what I go through here. I figured this was an $800 repair to somebody. And uh, I don't have $800 to hand over any more than you do. And uh, I intend this to stay on the road. I'm going to wish you the same that uh, you hang in there with your vehicle and keep it on the road. I appreciate your time. And pass it along if this helps you.